Have you ever wanted your PNG tuber to come from this to this? Well, in this video, I will be teaching you about the new PNG tuber program called PNG Tuber Plus. And in this video, I will teach you about the program, how to cut your art, how to animate your avatar, and export it into OBS. So let's get on with it. So there's a couple ways you can find the program. I'll link it in the description if you'd like, but also here's how you can look it up yourself. The creator, they post a lot of updates on their Twitter, so you should follow them if you really love this program. Recently, they made the zoom in feature, which I would have loved, and they also link it all the time. So you can just click it and immediately get to the page. Another way to go to the page is you look up itch.io on Google, and then you'll read it with this. You may not find it immediately. Do not look up PNG tuber in the top. You will not find the program. because It's listed in tools, which you can find on the left side in the browse category. It should be the first thing you find. If not, you can just go in the tags and search up PNG tuber, and then you find it. So if you click on it, you'll get brought to the file. You'll immediately see a lot of things on your screen, some examples, some features. So what you want to do is go into the downloads. It will say give the money. However, you can just say no thanks, take me to the downloads. When you click it, you'll see different versions. If you have Linux, download on Linux. If you have Mac, download the Mac version. And if you have Windows, there's the two Windows versions. There is a big problem with downloading things on itch.io, which we'll see once I press download. Windows just kind of acts like it's a virus sometimes, which it isn't. Once you download it, you can go into your files and find your downloads and just click on that. I have it in a WinRAR, so I don't know how you guys would, but mine is currently in a WinRAR. We'll just click on this and then we can open the program. So immediately when you open the program, you'll be brought to this. You may be wondering, why isn't it moving or why is it see-through? Because it is see-through on your end. However, in OBS, it will be black. For now, I'll just make it transparent on my end too, so you'll just see the background. So immediately when you open this, the mouth does not talk. You will have to select the little corner over here and press the microphone and then select on your microphone. Then once you do, then the model should be bouncing and talking. You also may be wondering, how do I open and edit this? Well, there's a little pin over here and you just click on that and then you're brought into the program. And if you want to get back out of that, you just click up here and press exit edit mode. So you may be wondering, how do I make my own model and put my own model in? This is where we go into the art program. So once you open the art program, you got to bring up your model. You could have one model theoretically. However, if you know PNG tuber models, you need to have at least eyes open, eyes closed, mouth open, mouth closed. I would recommend, however, splitting this up into four parts your eyes open, your closed eyes, your mouth closed, mouth open. And if you want, you can add your brow in there too, which I would personally, so probably five parts, but you do not have to if you just want to leave it on the head. I, however, do have a second eye, which when my character opens their mouth, their eye looks over to the right. When their mouth is closed, their eye looks to the left. So that's why I have eye two over in this corner. I did want to make them very animated. So I split a lot of parts, as you can tell over here. So I separated everything, even the head. And you could separate the head as if you wanted, but you do not have to, it's just if you want to. And you don't really need to do the body because nobody really does like full body PNG tumor models, but you can if you want. So after you have your model cut up and prepared, agonizing process is you do have to save it one by one. So what you would want to do is you would want to save all of these individually. You'd go into file, save as, and since this is the head, I type in head and then press PNG. Since I already made a model, this is kind of my preset stuff and it'll be here, not for you, but for me. Before you save anything, however, Make a new folder. This is very important. So just type in PNG tuber. So I'd save the head in here and that's all we're just going to save. Remember, save it as transparent, not 24 bit, not grayscale, transparent. So now that we have a file, just remember to hold it here. This is just an art file. Just ignore these. Remember, look at just make a file and put all your parts in there. So then we'll go back in the program. So when you're in the program, you will see the model here and you would want to delete it because you could just delete it by deleting the base body since everything is linked to that. And I'll tell you how to do that in a moment. So just delete the body and nothing. But when you want to add something, you press add sprite. However, you'll notice that your stuff is not in here. If you click on the body, it's just the base body. So do not do that. And if you do, just click the little trash icon. So in this little corner, it says escape to open folder and explore. So when you click escape, you'll see these four options. Do not click anything except for default avatar. So when you try and load a sprite, this is where it will go to. So when you open this, you will not have the new folder. This is why I told you beforehand to have your own folder. And what you can do is you can drag this in there. And then you that's all you need to do. As long as all your things are in here, that's all you need to do. So what you want to do is go to add new sprite. And you should see your new folder here. Click on the new folder. And then you could just spam away with what you want to have in here. So when you first get your sprite done, it will look a little iffy like this. We can move things, however. So let's say you put your head too far in the front. You can just press Q and it'll go in the back. For now, we'll keep it at that and just grab the eyebrow and then press E and that's how it gets in the front. But before we do anything major, so do not go off doing layers first, 
click on the mouth open and stick that to mouth open. So click on the mouth close and stick it on mouth close. So now it'll do that. So if you ever want to view this, just press the exit edit mode over here and then you should see your model move like that. And then same thing with the eyes. So this is eye open and then this is mouth open. So it's very easy to sync it to it. So if I had one of the eyes open, mouth open, that's how that looks. This is mouth close, eye open. And this is, and then for the eyes closed, you could just have it on eyes closed. And since I have two eyes and I go to open eye two, click on the second eye, open eye, and then open eye two. So it'll look very iffy here. So what you want to do is press X and then it'll look way better. The only thing is it does layers very transparent. If you want to fix that again, just press E and E. And so it looks like it stands out. Now we can get into the actual layering. So for anything you want to be in the front, again, press E if you ever forget. Q and E to change sprite Z index. Z index is basically the layers. So if you want something to be on top, you press E and it'll be higher. If you want it to be on the bottom, you press Q and it'll be lower. So example, I want this piece of hair to be on higher layer. So I press E twice and now it's on Z index two. Save for that. This is supposed to be higher, so it'll be on three. This will be on three. Well, this will be on four and this will be on five. All right. So now everything looks a bit more neater and then we'll do it again. So so if you have like the body on high, you could just press Q and it'll be behind the body. So I'd like to put the body on negatives, but that's just me. So that'll be on negative one. And try and sync these if they're like they're on the same side. So now that we have everything synced up, I will tell you, I like to use link sprites. So for the eyes, just link it to the head. And if you're ever confused what's linked or not, there's a little symbol right here for what is. And if you need to sync something under it, just spam the button and you'll get to it. And same things with the mouth. And boom, everything's now synced. Side note, if you ever have your model in here and it's way too big, they did fix this. So you press control and scroll wheel. So scroll in, you can scroll out depending what you want to do. This was not made before that. So that's why this model is really crunchy because I had to fit into 720 by 720. However, now you can fix it. Another thing is if you ever make your model a little iffy and you need to replace it, just click on replace sprite. And if you have another version, go find it. So let's say in the head. However, I cannot do that because everything's synced to the head. So if I change the sprite of the head, everything with the head will delete. And there's no undo button, so you kind of have to do everything again. So be careful of that. So now we can go into little effects. So the first effect we can go over is squash. Squash is kind of like <laughs> squash. And if you want to do everything on squash, you have to do it all manually, which is kind of the hard part, even if you sync it. That's kind of what squash does. It just squishes down, which is very nice and animated. So I do like this. So we'll keep this low. For now, I do need to sync the rest, so give me a moment. And again, for the head, you do want to sync the hair. And if you ever do want to clip something, you can see what you do clip it to with the little corner over here. So this is clipped to the head. This is the head, so there's nothing clipped to it. So you may be wondering, what does the Ys mean? You cannot see really if you do one at a time, so you kind of have to mix it up. So let's do Y amplitude on two and frequency on one. So I'll turn my mic off so we can see this better. So already you can see like it move up and down. So the amplitude shows how much it'll move. And this is really good for idle animations. And this is also really good if you clip things. So let me just clip that and see everything moves together. And if you wonder what Y frequency means, it's how fast it'll go. So if you want more of like a little game animation, you can do something like that. But again, do not try and do it like too far or the head will pop out. And it's really hard to catch sometimes. So now we can get it to the X. The X is just like the Y. So you got to do a little amplitude, a little frequency. So amplitude again is how much it'll go left to right because this is the X axis. This is the Y axis, which kind of shows here. If we synced everything, we can really kind of just do that. And again, if you want to sync things to the body, so move with the body and the body can move with the head, then you can go ahead and do that. So yeah, you can have like a little animation going and you can like mix these up too if you just want to have your character like move around. However, if you do try and unsync something like this, it will not go back to the original, which you can see is the X and Y over here. And you can change it from WASD. W brings your thing down and you can see when you bring it back to zero, that's how that works. A moves it left, D moves it right. And if you ever need to get it back in the middle, you can just kind of click it over here until it's back on zero. So if we do again on the Y frequency to be up and down, you may be wondering, what is index drag? Index drag is kind of how slow it'll go. And you can see the original movement right here compared to the index drag. Okay, so another cool thing I like to do is I like to use rotational drag on some things. So however, if you do rotational drag on one thing, you kind of have to do it with everything. We'd have to see what our rotational drag is. So this would be 12. Then we have to bring this to 12. Even if it's synced, we still have to bring it. And then boom, it tracks. 
Now to get into easy animation. So this is just for people who don't want to do the whole shebang. I'll just tell you kind of what you can do. So if you want to make an idle movement, just kind of take the amplitude to something like four. And I like to set my things to like 23 to 25. So we'll just do it on 25 and everything will be brought to that. If you wanted your character to just not be synced, you can do that. So you can separate the head from the body and make the body move at its own frequency. So I like to do that to have something else kind of moving. So it looks a little alternating. So if you wanted a little delay on the mouth of the body, you could just add a little drag. So the head could kind of pop out, which can be a little weird. It can clip, be careful of that and just kind of look around. So this would be on zero, so it will be synced together or you can just put like one delay and it's all good. And yeah, I like to add like a little bit of movement down here too, kind of just a little off sync. So it gives like a breathing type of expression. Again, a good thing you could do is add like a little squash to everything and it'll just give a little bouncy effect. Again, with the squash, you do need to make everything the same squash. So if we do the squash at, let's say one, then we have to set this squash to one. Let me just speed this up here. And there we go. Everything kind of squishes together and it looks a little cute. Again, it can make everything a little bit too jumpy if you aren't into that. So things that can sync with the whole clipping is the Y's and X's. So the other things that will not move to the body is the squash and the rotational drag. So if you ever use those, you got to do it on every single part. All right, so this is kind of like a little guy you could do. And I think this is pretty good. However, if we want to make it better, you can do stuff like squishing everything individually to make it bigger or bouncier and so on. So if I wanted to make the eyebrow give more of a movement, I could just set this to two instead of one and it gives like a more bouncy effect and see how that looks. That looks all nice. So if your model somehow has the same thing I do with like little effects, you do have to kind of edit it a bit since it will peek out under the mouth. So we'll set this to about seven. Then we could set this to seven as well. So this looks pretty good. However, again, I can't do much because it clips through the mouth. If you do not have a clipping, I would recommend this to give a cool, more like bouncy feel if you wanted. But for now, we'll just kind of set it to like one to match everything else. Same applies with the um, with the eyes if you want to squish those. Now we can get into more complex things. So if you have movement you really want, I like to add movement to the hair to kind of bounce in. So like to, I like to do positive two to negative two. So when I talk, it bounces in. And you can kind of do this on a little bit of everything. And again, you can kind of see which ways they go, seeing like the drags. So this will be on like negative three. You'll be on like negative two, positive three, positive two. Sometimes it will look a bit iffy like this and you really do not kind of want that. So just kind of shape it around. You get something like this. If your hair was less complex, I would recommend doing something like that. However, my hair is more complex, so I just kind of have to move it around so it looks good. Remember, if you ever wanted to be like slower, you can always do the drag. Um, however, I think this is a bit too bouncy for me. So I would do something like that. It's still good with the delay if you just want general balance, but I don't really like that on the top of the hair, so I'll get rid of that. Another thing you could do instead of just adding bounce is you can make these more squishier. So if I do everything on two, so everything is like quite cute and squishy and that's kind of how this will look. It can be very, very bouncy. If you want to nerf the bounce, then you could do something like that and change just the bounce to the top corner. So if you want it like really bouncy, you can just kind of set it 500. What you would start off with is 250. Again, if you need to get it exactly, just use your key arrows. And if you want to go down, because I like to stay by the 150 to 180, and I think that's pretty good. So now we get into the weird things. If you ever wanted like a little movement in your hand, you can do something like this, but it's very iffy. If you put both of these on rotational six, one will go out, one will go in. So what I like to do is I like to put one on six and then one on the other side on negative, like I just did the hair. And yeah, so they kind of bounce out and that's pretty cute. And if I wanted to, I could do Y amplitude and it gives like a little movement. Again, these are type of things you would want to be slower. So you would add a delay to it. It will be like a little silly, <laughs> but I think it makes like really, really cute model. So if we press X, this is kind of how it'll look. And yeah, I think that's pretty nice. Nerf it a bit. You could just set this to three and this to like negative three and it'll be less. Again, just how it looks without it. And if you wanted to make it really slow, you could do something like that, but it will not sync with the body, which is kind of silly, I guess. If I want this to sync with the head, I could do that and it syncs with the head. So if I get rid of the delay, that's kind of how it move with this. And if I wanted it back, I could just resync it. Like something minor, like this is very nice. So this would be on two and this would be on negative two. If I wanted to do something again, I would put it in here. So let's say, so if I talked, it'll go in and that's all cute and nice. If I wanted, again, minor movement, like on the belts, I would click on the belt 
and add like a squash. But I don't want it to kind of rise out of the pants, so you have to be careful with that. Here is where I really like to make a difference. I could just make it very bouncy, very nice. And so you get something a little like this. But another like minor minor thing is I do like when it bounces in. So what I like to do here is I like to add like negative one. So it goes out like that. And then I add a positive one. So it goes in. And if you ever wanted to off sync these, what you can do is you can make the Y change again. So again, the more you do, the more it's going to move. So always be wary of that. So if I wanted it to move a lot, it'll be like that. If I wanted to move it a little, it could be like that. Just as like a little bit of off sync. So be one and 23. Remember to copy on both sides because it will not sync otherwise. And there, you get like a nice little over effect too. So let's say I want the arms to sync with the head when that bounces. So I could do that. And if you ever wanted to match it, you just kind of click on the head and then you can copy these. So that would be four and 23. So here you can set this to four. So it moves right on sync with the head. Would I recommend this? Not really, but if that's what you want to do, then that's what you can do. I like to really sync it with the body more because I feel like that gives it more of like a breathing look than the head look. So if I set the amplitude back to like four, again, it's just the minor movements like this, which are really nice. You don't really need to add squish if you don't want to. It's all up to preference. And if, again, if you have like a miniature hair, I do recommend you do like a little cute squish. It just gives it like a little bit more of animation, which I think is really nice. Just remember not to add too much movement or else it will like contrast with the head. Sometimes it's really good to sync things. Like I like to sync the fur with this. So that'd be one on 23. So amplitude this one on one and 23. Again, you could kind of play with it. So if you like one, you can move it on one. If you like none, then you can move it on none. Like something I like to do is I like to add like a bit of drag and then you get something like this, which is pretty nice. If you did want to make your head rotate and bobble like this, you can always set the rotational drag to six. But if you do that to one part, you got to do it to every part. So when you're done with the model, you could just go into the save avatar, click on this, and you can save it in here, but I like to save mine in the new folder with all my other stuff and just do like YouTube. And boom, you got a new model. And if you ever want to load it, you could just go into here. So this is the avatar that came with it again. Click on that. If you want to go to your model, you just have to find YouTube. And then you got it. So now let's put our model into OBS. As soon as you open OBS, I already have mine, but I'll teach you how. You can press plus, add a, add a window capture, type in PNG tuber. I'll have two since I already have one. It sh may automatically show up. If not, it will be there. So if we switch this to a see-through, It should be see-through. If not, you can always change it from 8-bit to Windows 7. Yep. And on Windows 7, it should be see-through. You could also probably do it through game capture, but I would just do this for example. Press OK. And that's how you would get PNG Trooper Plus into OBS. And so that reaches the conclusion of this video. If you liked this video and if it helped you, please subscribe and like down below and comment if you need any help. I will be doing a giveaway for a model just like this on twitter.com slash amelodicperson. I'll also be using this model on Twitch, so also follow that too.